Okay, um, today putting together a quick video um, on how to mod the LightOn um, 9 series, and this will actually work with any LightOn in a fat Xbox 360. Um, this particular one happens to be a 9345. Um, so this one uh, we will go ahead and mod. You'll need to follow my earlier video tutorial about how to open your Xbox 360. I'm assuming you can get that far at this point if you're interested in modding your drive. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up the drive here and unplug its connections and I'm going to set the Xbox to the side because the methods that we're going to use to do this were, are going to allow us um, to do this completely without the Xbox. However, it is worth absolutely noting here that there are more than one way to skin a cat, they say. Um, you can most certainly um, do this with using the Xbox to power the drive. You can do this with other tools um, that other companies other than what I am going to suggest that you use produce. Um, but this is the method that I've used on lots and lots and lots of drives and absolutely works without a doubt. So while I was chatting, you saw me just open the Xbox 360 base. Uh, all I did was take the four screws off the bottom here. Um, so that allows me to wobble the drive apart. Um, and there was actually a disc in mine, so um, probably want to check that before you do this. I'm going to set the top lid apart, and I'm going to set the bottom lid over there. Um, real quick before we continue, what I would like to point out are, are some of the tools that I use and that I suggest. This is an Executor CK3 Pro. Um, this device accepts a Molex 4-pin power and converts that to the power that the Xbox accepts so that you can power and eject your drive. Once upon a time, this was really useful for doing what they call the MRA hack as well, um, but it's really kind of outdated now. Um, the eject button is basically what gets used the most here, and then connecting and disconnecting uh, Molex power. Um, they make a CK3i, which is a very similar device. There's a CK3, a um, couple of different series of these devices, but the basic principle is Molex power in, DVD power out, so you can power the drive while you do the mod. The next device that I use is a X360 USB. This device converts USB. It actually uses two inputs, a USB and a uh, DC power, and then um, allows a SATA connection out. This is really great for those of you who are using a laptop, number one, because it makes it possible, uh, or who don't have a compatible SATA chipset on your computer or don't want to open your case all the time, whatever. I actually rotate back and forth between using this and my onboard SATA. I just find this so convenient because I can run it via USB and it works great. And if you're going to do multiple mods, it's definitely worth it. If not, give your onboard SATA chipset a try. Um, it's, it's just as functional in most cases. Um, and then the last thing we're going to use on this particular drive is a Probe 3 by Team Executor. Um, this device delivers uh, the voltage that we need to across a particular pin um, that we are going to need in order to dump the firmware off of any of the uh, drives that we, we mod here. Um, this particular one was damaged at one point, so you can see a little bit of hot glue on there, um, but it isn't normally like that. This is, um, one end will go into our CK3 Pro, and then the other end will go into the Xbox, and it does have a power interrupt button built in here. These are pretty awesome. They let you use any light on um, 7 series, 8 series, or 9 series. Just dump it with the push of a probe. It's great. Saves tons of time. Uh, eliminates the MRA hack need unless you really fuck up. Um, so, yeah. So, on with the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and take my CK3 Pro and plug in my uh, Molex Power, which I have a power adapter um, which just plugs into regular 110 AC and uh, goes out to Molex power. You can pick these up pretty cheap too, 10 bucks, something like that. 
this little on off switch you can see will now light up an LED which tells me that this thing is putting out juice. So we're going to plug in one end of our um, probe uh, and these only fit one way so if you get it going one way and it doesn't work don't force it, stop and, and switch out. I'm also going to plug in uh, off screen here a little bit the um, X360 USB Pro. Again, it requires two USB connections because it uses a, a fair chunk of power. Um, so you need to plug one into mm -hmm. that's the data connection and then plug the other into the other slot so mm -hmm. it can tap the other port for um, USB power. So here, this lead runs into my X360 USB and comes out SATA, so you can see that. Um, this, you can see over here, runs into my um, CK3 Pro and runs out via the probe. So I'm going to take the back of my Xbox drive now and I'm going to go ahead and plug in. Again, only goes one way, do not force it, that's not a good idea. Um, and then I'm going to plug in my SATA connection. Um, on the CK3 Pro now I can press my little eject button and you can see my tray actually eject and retract. So I have confirmation. So I have confirmation that the drive is functional and responds and all that sort of stuff. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually switch it up and show you on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Jungle Flasher application. I'm running Windows 7, so I have to run it with administrative rights. Um, and it's going to fire up here in just a moment. And I'm going to go to the DVD32 tab, and you can see that my drive properties are already there. It's got um, detected. If I wanted to, just to prove a point, I can actually come to my CK3 Pro, turn my power off, so my drive no longer has power. I'm going to refresh to look for my drive properties and as soon as it does no drive detected now I'm going to come back and turn my power back on and then I'll refresh again and you can see my drive once again detected now this is the part where we need to go back to the drive so I'm going to flip the drive over and before we do this what I'm going to show you real quick is the probe point that I'm going to hit the probe point that I'm going to hit is labeled MPX01 and it's this little bitty tiny bugger right in here. I'll probably throw an image in um, with a big arrow pointing for it here. But it's this MPX01 at the very edge of my fingertip right there. That's the point that I'm going to be hitting with the probe here momentarily during this process. Um, so I'm going to grab my probe and have it handy. And then also, if you can see it here, in line, um, we've got my little power switch. So what I'm going to do is be all set up and ready to probe. I'm going to go back to Jungle Flasher and I'm going to press the fat key button. The fat key button is going to throw up a warning telling me to resend the command. I should click yes. I'm going to press the yes button. I'm going to press in the button on the probe. I'm going to probe the point. I'm going to release the button. I see extract complete. Before doing anything, I'm going to press it back in. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to release the button so that the power comes back on. Now press OK. And now you can see I'm, be prompt, I'm being prompted to save my key.bin. So I'm going to go ahead and save my key, my inquiry, my serial, my dummy, all of those files. And if you've got a firmware folder set up correctly, the next thing you're going to see is light on firmware loaded to source buffer. Do you wish to auto load light on plus? Basically, do you want me to go ahead and load up the flashed firmware? Yes. So now, um, what we've got on screen here is uh, your light on version 3.0, which is the newest version for this, with the DVD key spoofed down to it. This is your source firmware, what you just acquired from the drive. Here's your target firmware that you are um, going to flash back to the drive. We're going to save a copy of this just in case in the same location where we saved the other files. Now, I need to go back to my, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go to a new tab, the MTK Flash 32 tab. The MTK Flash 32 tab at this point is going to be what's going to allow us to write the firmware to it. 
only proceed with this part if you have your drive key saved. If you do not have your drive key saved at this point, you absolutely must, 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 must um, save it um, or, or start over again. Do not perform the light on a race until you have your drive key saved. So I'm going to go ahead, since I do have my drive key saved, I'm going to hit light on a race. It warns you, are you 100% sure you have the key because we're going to erase your drive? Yes. Okay, if you do this, we're going to have to send vendor intro so that we can get into write status, is what this says. Again, do you wish to proceed? Two chances to cancel. Yes. So now it's sending light on a race. And what I need to do here is actually, once I see these second dots, I'm going to turn the power off until I see status 80 and then back on. And you should see status 72 here in just a moment. Now, my drive, my chip on there, is in vendor mode and is able to be written to. So I'm going to go ahead, now that that's done, and click the write button. And you can see here we're writing to bank 0, bank 1, bank 2. And it'll go through this and at the end basically you'll get a write verify. So here's verification, write verified OK. We're actually completely done. This is it. It's flashed. Now all there is to reassemble and play some backups of your original games that you own. So we're going to close Jungle Flasher. We're going to save the jungleflasher.log file so that we can prove what we did if there's any questions or problems and we need some support. Press save. And what I like to do at this point is disconnect the SATA, power off the drive by turning off the CK3 Pro, power the drive back on, and then if a drive responds to an eject command, it means it at least has some sort of firmware written to it. So I like to eject it just to make sure that it's got some sort of firmware on here that it, it can recognize and, and do something with. We're going to do this, and we're good to go. We've got a modified drive. Pop it back in our Xbox and throw our uh, burned backup game in there.